Hello, my name is Mike Kissenberth, an orthopedic surgeon with the Stedman Hawkins Clinic of the Carolinas. I will discuss total shoulder arthroplasty with you today. Total shoulder arthroplasty or, or replacement of the shoulder is the third most common joint performed. The most common joint performed today is total knee replacement, followed by total hip replacement, and, uh, and, a, and a third is total shoulder replacement. It is becoming a more common procedure to be performed. The standard indications for total shoulder replacement are shoulder arthritis. Shoulder arthritis comes in all flavors. It can be from general osteoarthritis to inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis. Nevertheless, our goal of treating shoulder arthritis is at first to treat you in a non-operative conser conservative manner. That usually includes a full history, a full examination, and a full evaluation of your diagnostic studies. That may include simple x-rays or sometimes additional studies may be performed to include an MRI. Sometimes additionally a CAT scan will be required as well depending on the nature of your disease. Once a diagnosis of shoulder osteoarthritis or shoulder degenerative joint disease is made, your surgeon will then discuss with you your treatment options. Our non-operative treatment options for shoulder arthritis are standard conservative measure, measures to include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications like Motrin and Naperson and Celebrex or some of the examples that we use. You know, those carry with them a, a small amount of side effects, but they are, re, are real. We will discuss those with you. Other treatment regimens include physical therapy for rehabilitation to try and restore as much function as possible sometimes activity modifications and in particular if you perform a lot of overhead activities if we could calm down what you're doing often the shoulder will respond as well. Most often in the office a shoulder injection will be performed. We, we inject shoulders for diagnostic and therapeutic reasons. Diagnostically if we're unsure of the diagnosis um, we will sometimes perform that and then re-examine your shoulder. Often the therapeutic part of injections is with the use of a corticosteroid what we often say prednisone or cortisone injection. Several different varieties are made. They all have the same effect, which is a strong anti-inflammatory to be used in the shoulder. Often with initial treatment with an injection, anti-inflammatories, activity modifications, and some physical therapy, we can get the shoulder arthritis under some control. Occasionally, we will also perform visco supplementation. There are several examples of that, and that's a lubricant that is placed into the shoulder joint. Currently, that is not FDA approved for the shoulder, um, but we will occasionally still get approval to use it. Um, it appears in the very near future there will have additional applications for visco supplementation in the shoulder and other joints throughout the body. Currently, it is indicated for the knee primarily. If non-operative treatment does not work, you may be indicated for a total shoulder replacement. The standard reason that I will indicate a patient for a shoulder replacement is that they have pain, that has been unresponsive to conservative management. It affects their quality of life. They often have night pain. They're unable to lie in that affected shoulder and have difficulty sleeping at night. If that is the situation and, and they're otherwise medically healthy, we'll have a discussion about a total shoulder replacement. I have an example of a shoulder model here. The shoulder is a very complex joint. It includes both the shoulder blade, the scapula on the back, the clavicle on the top here, and then the ball and socket. The ball and socket is the glenohumeral joint. The humerus here is the ball, and then your socket. When people get arthritis of the shoulder, it often involves the ball and the socket. There are some conditions where it may only involve the ball, some, for example, avascular necrosis and other post-traumatic injuries, but by and large, the standard indication for performing a shoulder replacement is bone-on-bone -bone arthritis of the ball and socket. Now, that's an example of the ball and socket joint, and let's talk a little bit about the implant that is put in. Here is an example of a total shoulder. This is the ball. So this ball right here is made out of cobalt, chrome, and titanium. It takes the place of the humerus, which is the ball. So to do your surgery, and hopefully we'll provide you some illustrations of that, we have to remove the ball. And, and then the stem is inserted down the shoulder and this now becomes your new ball. Now why does this help with pain control? Because simply put, the arthritic surface, which is down to bare bone, is full of nerve endings and often very painful. It will no longer have that problem if you have a new surface. Now the other part is the socket. 
So here's an example of an entire total shoulder. We talked about the ball and here's the socket. The socket is put on the glenoid side of the shoulder joint. In a similar fashion, if I go back to the shoulder model, I'll explain that to you. So here is, your, here is the socket of the shoulder and if it's arthritic, this is all worn down. So with that small plastic piece, we take down the arthritis and cement in. So we often cement in a glenoid component. At the conclusion of the procedure, you will have a new ball here and a new socket. And this will be how the new shoulder articulates and is very successful in relieving pain because the arthritic surfaces have been removed. In order to do that procedure, um, we often have a patient medically cleared to make sure there are no other medical comorbidities that may um, present problems to us at surgery. It is a bigger surgery than arthroscopic surgery and is often done through a incision over the front of the shoulder. And I could show you on my shoulder here, you'd have an incision on your shoulder from, from here to here. We often glue that incision shut following the procedure, but that allows, a, that allows us access to the shoulder joint uh, so that we could remove the surfaces and then put in your new total shoulder. Often if you have a shoulder, you'll be in the hospital for one to two days, and I'd say the average is two days. Um, you will be placed in a simple sling, you also have an ice wrap put on your shoulder and we'll, the initial couple days are really spent trying to manage your pain and get you back on the road. Um, the following day we'll start physical therapy right away and we'll start some simple movements of the shoulder to keep it moving. You'll be in a sling for often four weeks. Uh, you'll come out of the sling every day to do our certain exercises as part of our rehab protocol. The results following total sh shoulder arthroplasty are very reliable and very good with results exceeding 90% in return to function and decrease in pain. As with any surgery, it carries with it the standard risks of surgery. The risks of surgery include, but are not limited to bleeding, infection, damage to nerves or blood vessels, and the chance that you may require an additional procedure in the future. It is our goal to try and treat your shoulder arthritis without surgery, but should you need a shoulder replacement, we were very satisfied here that we could improve your quality of life dramatically.